On today's episode, we are going to show you something we've been working on for months. We renovated our kitchen on a super small budget using just paint and a little bit of elbow grease. We also put in new lights in the kitchen and a ceiling fan. And then here in the Eden kitchen, same thing. We just put in new lights, new ceiling fan, and a whole lot of sweat equity with painting this 1970s paneling that we had. It was in rough shape, you guys. I know there's quite a few of you who may like that wood paneling, but it was in terrible shape, especially around that window there. We also got a Facebook Marketplace dining set, and I used all thrifted items to decorate this room. I wanted to put plants back into that big, huge window seat that we have in our Eden kitchen, but I didn't want to use the same kind of plants that I had had there before or that our previous owners had obviously put there because there were big watering stains in there. So I'm going to work with Easy Plant to get some plants in this window that aren't going to overflow water. The biggest issue I have with indoor plants is one I don't know how to take care of them <laughs> two they put water everywhere when you water them even though this one has that little base in there it still overflows water and this plant has driven me nuts it's really a miracle that this thing is still alive because I hardly ever water it but these plants come with a special self-watering system and it doesn't leak water out anywhere and you only have to water it once a month and that is something that I can definitely do you all know how busy I am with four kids running two businesses and my husband is in school full time, but Easy Plant literally does do what their name says. It is an Easy Plant. Here's a good picture of exactly what I'm talking about with their watering system. They have like a little tank inside each one of these that waters the plant with exactly how much water it needs. It comes in four different sizes and you can even buy them in a collection. They hand pick out perfect plants for you guys to make sure that you're getting really beautiful plants. It comes in the mail. It doesn't get any easier than that. I really love the collections that they have because you can get a huge discount on many plants all at once. Or you can hand pick out one or two plants that you want or custom make your collection because the more you buy, the bigger the discount you get. But I really love that it shows which plants are pet friendly and which ones do well in low light because... I have two dogs and Piper is not the brightest. She loves to chew on things that she's not supposed to. Your plants will also come with this little booklet that tells you a little bit about your plant and how to take care of it best, although they are very simple and easy plants to take care of to begin with. But I'm really excited to show you today's makeover in my Eden kitchen. It was so bland and boring and beat up in here before. And the after is going to be so bright and full of life. And I've added in my feng shui here to help my energy flow and clean my air. And if you're interested in trying out Easy Plant, I have a 10% discount code in the description box for you. Here is a look at what our kitchen and dining room looked like when we first moved in two years ago. All of the cabinetry is original and the hardware that was on there is definitely from many decades ago. I loved the blue and white doorknob and I thought the blue and white hardware was actually really cute but I was wanting something to go more with the appliances and that brush nickel look for my handles and shockingly my stove that is in here is the original one but it's like so easy to clean that I don't want to change it and it's probably going to work forever <laughs> since it's been in here since 1975 but the kitchen just needed updating the cabinets like some of the handles were broken they were really worn and they're just like upgraded plywood pretty much so they just needed to change it was way too dark in this room and I thought that just our entire downstairs is too dark and I think that doing the paint on the cabinets is the most cost-effective way that I could bring light into this room without doing a full-blown like gut job renovation I mean these are wooden cabinets they're very sturdy but they're just worn out the sink and the faucet are great. They did a renovation in here with the countertops, sink, some of the appliances. I'm guessing sometime around the early 2000s, just based on the color choices and tile and, you know, the age of the appliances that are still in great condition. But I didn't want to spend money changing out the counter or any of the appliances or even the layout in general. Like, our house is not open concept, but I don't want it to be. I like 
walls. I like a closed in concept. I just wanted there to be more light in here. And so what we did is we painted all the cabinets and changed out this ceiling light for a ceiling fan because it's Houston, Texas, y'all, and it is hot and humid over here. But we also put in some recessed lighting in here, and I'll show you that later. My husband and his uncle did that together on one weekend. It was actually a pretty simple project and something that I think you could DIY with enough um, video practice, like learning about how to do it, or maybe with the supervision of somebody who knows quite a bit about electricity. But the paneling in the, the Eden kitchen area also had to be painted. It was just too dark in here. <laughs> Sorry about my my paperwork here is really messy. It had really cute light switch covers, but the light switches were really old and they were that almond off-white color. So those got upgraded in this makeover as well. And also throughout the last two years of living in this home, we have gone through like three or four different dining sets. I just could not decide what I wanted in here. I liked this counter height one, but it just, it was harder for my kids to get on there and it was all fabric seats which are really hard to keep clean when you have four kids and also behind this big painting here is a broken intercom system from 1975. We definitely uh, didn't want to have to do any drywall after removing that so it's behind there. I just hung this picture on it during this time and then later on and you've probably already seen this in my past videos my husband made me a little plate rack that we put on the wall there instead but the wall color that was in here was already pretty good. I just wanted to brighten it up because like I was saying, this whole downstairs in is like super dark. It is kind of depressing, honestly. <laughs> and unfortunately, I think we are going to paint the wooden paneling that we have in my living room as well. So this paneling is also in my living room, but it goes floor to ceiling in there. And it's cool looking, but... It is so dark in there, especially on days where it's overcast. Man, it is hard to find motivation on those days. But here's a close look at that window seat that we have in the Eden kitchen. Um, it had a lot of stains from people leaving cups and plant pots and just whatever. I mean, this, this house is older than me. It's seen some things. It was loved and lived in by other families. So I don't expect it to be perfect. That's for sure. And then over here, I have my vintage plate collection hanging on that plate rack. Like I was saying, we changed that out. And then this dining set we got off of Facebook marketplace. I got the table and the bench for like $40 or $35. And then those two chairs I got for the pair 50 bucks. And I'm, of course, using a butter knife to remove <laughs> the screws on all the outlets. And then I'm going to prime all the wood paneling with some bin primer. This is the best primer you can use. And the one that has shellac in it is even better, but it's just a little too expensive for us right now. So this can of paint, I think we only use maybe a third of it or less doing the paneling in the Eden kitchen. And it took me weeks to get this painting done on this paneling just because, as you see, my kids always want to be involved. And I am a stay-at-home mom. My kids do school at home. So I don't really have a chance to do things without the kids there to help me out. So I had to do things a little bit at a time before they got a little too curious and tried to get into the paint as well. <laughs> they, they always just want to help. They're the sweetest children I could have possibly asked for. But it's definitely hard to keep a two-year-old and a four-year-old out of the paint because, I mean, it's so tempting to them. <laughs> I hand-painted with a brush all of the edges first, and then I went in with a foam roller to do the center part of these panelings. Um, you need to use foam rollers when you're painting something that is a completely flat, untextured surface because if you use a, a, a sp uh, I don't know, like the textury rollers whatever they're called they'll leave like an orange peel look behind with the paint it leaves the texture in the paint so you got to use foam rollers if you want to have a perfectly smooth finish painting like cabinet doors or wood paneling or just anything that's super flat and also something to think about is that this wood paneling is really slick so it does need primer and you need to use a stain blocking primer because this wood has stain in it, right? You don't know what's going to come through when you paint it. So you need to prime it. It has to be primed. 
and it also helps you out because when you do that white primer you don't have to do as many coats of your actual color that you're choosing to do at this point in the project I wasn't even sure if I was just going to paint the paneling white um, like the trim or if I was going to do the paneling and the wall the same color so I originally had wanted to do the paneling in like a glossy white to be kind of like how trim is in a semi-gloss or glossy white but then I got to thinking and it, it kind of just like broke the wall in half and it, it just it made our low ceilings still look really low like it's a, it's an older house it has you know low ceilings it's dark and things like that so I had to really pull out my designer skills here and think about what was going to make my room look biggest and brightest and not chopping the wall in half and you can see Piper is always near me she's even next to me when she's outside and I'm inside <laughs> but now we have the first coat all completely done this took me like a week to do just a little bit at a time I would just do a couple panels a day and get it done and I think that's actually a great way for you all to do projects like these is to just take it a little bit at a time if you're getting tired or you know if you have a bad back or bad knees or whatever it may be just do a little bit at a time um, when it does come time to do the actual wall color though you do need to do it all at once because if you don't it's going to look really blotchy where you left off and um, whenever you're painting the best way to not get a blotchy finish is to have it all stay wet the entire time that you're painting so as you're moving across the room you do it all at once and make sure that everything is wet and and everything at the same time and it all dries at the same time that will help it not be blotchy i'm doing the exact same steps here again which which is using a paintbrush for the edges and corners another thing that i did that i did not record was i did caulking in all of the edges i did it in all of the molding and everything because they didn't know wood filler or caulking at all in any of the joints in the wood because it was stained so you don't really notice it so I know that when it comes time for me to do my living room I'm gonna have to do a ridiculous amount of caulking because none of the wood in there um, in the joints is filled in so there's gaps all over the place in that wooden wall situation in there the color that I picked for the room was called classic and it is by Claire paint in case you were wondering they are a no VOC paint company which I love but it was left over from another DIY and this table like we said it is from Facebook marketplace I'm pretty sure we spent $35 for the table and the bench together the bench is painted all white and I think I'm gonna leave it that way for now I'm not 100% sure if I want to do the same wood on top and white on bottom like I did on the table or not but my husband is completely sanding down the top to bare wood and then I'm going to come back and stain it in a color called tobacco roads in a water-based gel stain and the reason why I use water-based things and no VOCs is because I am highly sensitive to chemical smells like it will literally make me sick for days like I have the flu and so I don't do it anymore and it's not worth it to me anymore although oil-based things are much more durable and better quality it's just not worth it <laughs> after you're done sanding it down be sure to wipe it down with a microfiber or lint free cloth and then with water-based stains you have to work in small spaces at a time so you're going to do everything all the way down the wood grain all at once in like rows like this so you can't just like stop halfway and then keep going horizontally. You have to do the entire row and then go back and do another row like how I'm doing. Just small little like four inch rows. If you try and do the left side of the table and then the right side of the table, you're going to have this stark line down the center of the table where it looks really blotchy and terrible. Water-based stains can look really blotchy and terrible if you don't do it exactly how I'm telling you right now. I ended up doing two coats of this stain. Another thing that most people don't know about water-based stains is that it will pull your grain back up because the wood absorbs the water and expands. So you have to sand it like I just did before you put on your clear coat. Don't sand too hard or you're going to sand off that wood stain. You're just trying to get that roughness to disappear from the wood grain popping back up. And then in between coats of my clear coat, I'm also going to do a sanding, but it's a specific type of sanding 
where you're just doing it by hand like I did just before I started putting my clear on. But I'm just going to slide the, the piece of sandpaper directly across the table just from left to right all the way down and go with the wood grain and do that in between every single coat of clear coat. And I did five coats of gloss polyacrylic, which is a water-based poly. And it's really good stuff. It's really durable actually, and it's pretty affordable. But now I'm gonna put everything back together in this room and start the best part, which is the reveal. Look at the shine on that table. It is gonna withstand a lot of baby messes on here. <laughs> and we're actually thinking of putting in another bench and then having the chairs be on either end just so we can fit more people because right now this table only fits our family. So if other people come over and we're all sitting in this room, we don't fit. And also when Rory is done being in a high chair, we're not gonna fit. So I think we're gonna start hunting for another Facebook marketplace bench, but I haven't decided yet if I want to stain the top of the bench or leave it all white. So let me know in the comments section, what do you think I should do? And also should I antique the white to look more like the finish on the chairs? Cause that's something else I was considering doing. But now it's time to put my plants in the window seat and bring some more life into this room. These are also air purifying plants and I'm a big fan of feng shui. So I picked plants that in feng shui will bring prosperity and you know, just good energy and things like that. Every single one of these plates was bought secondhand, either from estate sales or online estate auctions or in thrift stores. But this one right here was one that my grandmother thrifted and she's the one who started me on all of the thrifting. But they were so affordable because I bought them secondhand and it's so good for our planet to just reuse things that are old and amazing and beautiful instead of buying new. But if you have to buy new, I did see these patterns at the home goods store and I think they were like $7 to $10 per plate. Blue and white plates are my favorite. Blue and white in general is just my favorite. Like blue and white clothes, blue and white fabrics, blue and white plates, blue and white lamps. Just, I could take anything in blue and white pretty much. But I think that these being older and having some crazing and just some age to them helps bring charm to the room. So don't be afraid to use your sentimental items as decoration on your walls. Just do it in a cohesive way. I picked up this really cute blue hydrangea wreath from the at-home store and it was only $19.99 and it looks gorgeous in here for spring and even early summer. I like to change out this wreath seasonally. The next thing that we did was my husband and his uncle put in recessed lighting in here and this ceiling fan. We already had a ceiling fan in here, but it had lights hanging from it, which made the ceiling feel much lower. So by putting recessed lighting in and having a flush mount small space fan, it makes this room feel so much taller while still having the functionality of having a ceiling fan. I know that ceiling fans aren't like the most designer friendly thing to have in your home, but they are completely necessary here in the South. We need it. We need to have air moving because it gets really, really humid. And my favorite part now is where I'm going to decorate the table and finish decorating this room in general. And then I'm going to reveal to you the kitchen, which we finished as well. I have this table runner uh, that I've had for a very long time, for years. And then this basket was in my last thrift haul video where I got tons of high-end stuff for super cheap. And then these are all wax. So like the candle holder, the candle, everything is all wax. I got those from the at-home store as well as this little topiary, which I think perfectly added green into that corner. And here's what we started with before. Just a reminder in case you forgot how dark it was in this room. But look at it now. It looks twice as big in here, even twice as tall in here. It feels so much bigger. I feel like I can breathe more in here. And when it's dark and cloudy outside, like it is so often here in Houston, Texas, it doesn't feel depressing in the house anymore. I feel like I have this really high end, beautiful French country, but like a little bit modern look going on in here. 
per usual, I'm always super inspired by Ballard designs. And a lot of this, what I have in here, is very similar to what I see in the Ballard Designs collections of their amazing high-end furniture. But I think I might get some colored curtains in here. What do you think? And then on this wall, I added a piece of art instead of having that basket organizer there just because I thought that it was something that was always getting disorganized and it was stressful to look at. But this was really pretty from Home Goods or no, sorry, Hobby Lobby. But the kitchen before, it's almost hard to remember that this was our kitchen. <laughs> it has been white for a really long time now. I just haven't had a chance to film this video. I was waiting to finish the Eden kitchen before I showed you all, but it looks so much better now. It functions so nicely. It's so bright. It helps brighten this whole room, especially now that we have can lights in the kitchen as well. I also changed this area to make it my husband's little coffee nook and all of this was painted with rust-oleum enamel flat paint we took all the cabinets and drawers outside and spray painted them with cans of rust-oleum white flat enamel paint it was the cheapest way to do this renovation it also goes by so fast you don't have to prime it you don't have to do any kind of prep work on here because i'm telling you enamel paints are extremely durable and with a painted surface dings are going to happen so just keep an extra can on hand and if you ever have a little ding here or there you spray it onto like a paper plate and then just grab your brush and grab that paint and just brush it onto any little dings you might get. But this is the most budget-friendly way I can tell you guys to do your kitchen. And all of my hardware came off of Amazon. I bought it in bulk on there. It was so cheap. It was like a dollar or less per handle. This massive ugly light was like a spaceship, like beam me up, you know. <laughs> I hated it. And it, the room was so dark, even with that massive light in here. But now we have all these can lights put in and that ceiling fan in there now in place of where that big old box light was. But it all looks so much better. And it's amazing to me what a little bit of paint can do. Because really, that's mostly what I did. I didn't do any tearing out walls. I didn't do any demo at all, actually. <laughs> Other than we had to cut the holes out to put the can lights in. Um, above this area is an open attic, so it was very easy for my husband and his uncle to wire all of that. And all the switches were already there. Everything was already there. We just had to add extra lights to it. And something to pay close attention to is the color scheme that I went with. All the color is in the decor. So when you are doing some kind of, um, you know, paint renovation on a room in your house, just making things lighter and brighter or if you want to modernize your house a little bit just to kind of update it the best advice that i can give you is to go all neutral on the things that can't be changed easily so all the walls are the same color nice light neutral color but it's still an interesting room because I have pops of color all over the place. I have plants, which of course brings the outdoors in. I have very um, calming colors in my wood and in my chairs there. And the pop of color comes from the things that are really interesting that can be changed out seasonally, like the plates. Now it's time for Piper's outtake. Piper. Good girl. <laughs> Yeah, she's a good girl. Who's a good girl? That's a sweetie girl. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw today, don't forget to hit subscribe down below. We post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. See you next time. Bye.